This is a follow-up video to my last video titled Top 5 Worthless Motorcycle Stuff where you guys commented and said Psycho Cruiser we want to hear more about the crappy stuff you had. So in this video 10 mods that I wish I never did that was an absolute waste of money and time. Let's go for a ride! watching Psycho Cruises all on one motorcycle channel. Subscribe today. The very first mod that I wish I never did and it caused a thousand dollars worth of damage which a lot of you guys already know about is me putting on this crappy Pro X counter sprocket on my WR250R and it stripped the splines on the output shaft of the transmission shaft there and it caused, like I said, a thousand dollars worth of damage. The engine has to be pulled, the case has to be split, and basically you have to rebuild the transmission to put that new uh, shaft in. So, and it's gonna take like three weeks, three to four weeks to get done. I'm highly pissed off. I already, already chronicled everything about this, this issue in a previous video, which I'll include it in the video link in the description uh, and comment section of this video. So I'm not gonna go over that. Uh, I did install it correctly, but I feel like I got a defective one or ill-fitting one here and it, it caused that damage. In my opinion, and this is my advice to all of you, is stick with the OEM counter sprocket. Look how beefy that is and strong and the OEM counter sprocket is specifically built, it's engineered for the particular bike that it comes with. You stick with that, you install it correctly, you'll never have an issue. But you're basically taking a gamble with aftermarket sprockets. It's not worth it, guys. It really isn't, man. For rear sprocket, it's fine for aftermarket, uh, but counter sprocket, you're better off sticking with OEM, in my opinion. Uh, but you can do with it whatever the hell you want to do. But anyways, the number two mod that I wish I never did that was a waste of time is putting on the Bazaz Z-Bomb Timing Retard Calibrator on my CBR 1000 RR. Wish I'd have never did that, guys. Uh, you know, it said it's supposed to give you an extra five to seven horsepower. It's supposed to eliminate the factory timing on it and release some extra power on it uh, that changes the timing or whatnot. But basically, all that stupid thing did was uh, actually, I lost five miles per gallon in fuel efficiency, and the bike smelled like gas. Uh, it ran rich when I rode the bike. Uh, if you're gonna put that thing on, you know, make sure you get, uh, a, you know, get like a fuel controller, like a power commander or whatnot, or the Bazaz unit, and have them either put a custom map on there, you know, have it uh, dyno tune or whatnot so that they can even out the air fuel ratio properly. Uh, that's the only way to do it if you're gonna go that route. Uh, I took that sap sucker off. Now I got my fuel efficiency back. And, and I tell you guys, it, it did not make it any faster with that calibrator, you know. It felt just like OEM, if not worse. Uh, number three mod that I wish I never did is go one tooth down on the front sprocket on the CBR. I'll tell you guys, um, it doesn't, it supposedly it's, it's supposed to make it feel a little quicker off the line. That's bullshit. It doesn't feel any different than stock. If anything, it threw off the speedometer two or three miles per hour. If I had to do it over again, I would have kept the front sprocket the same and I would have went up some teeth on the rear sprocket. And yes, I probably would have added the speedo healer to correct the issue, but I, I, I use a uh, GPS anyhow. So it's not that big of a deal. The number fourth bad mod that wasted my time was Putting on these spoke protectors on my OEM WR250R rims, as you can see here. I'm telling you guys, it looks tacky. I'll be honest with you, I'll keep it real, man. It, it looks childish. <laughs> it, it, like my, it looks like when I was in elementary school and I put straws on the spokes of my BMX, man. It, it doesn't really do much, to be honest with you guys. A waste of time, waste of money. If you're gonna, you want your bike to look better, do it the proper right way and get some some aftermarket uh, rims, get some DID STX rims, which are the best on the market, and get some Bulldog spokes powder coated. Look at this, guys, with the, the gold nipples. That looks absolutely sick, which looks way more cleaner, better. Doesn't look childish like the old stupid spoke covers. Just my opinion, though, like I said, whatever. Number five mod that I was a waste of my time and wish I never did is put the RNG 
no cut frame sliders on the CBR 1000 RR back in the day. RNG makes good stuff. First off, I'm not putting them down as a company, but the no cut frame sliders from any company is garbage for this bike, guys. I'll tell you, uh, uh, from my understanding, and it can actually cause more damage to the bike should it go down. There was a female motorcycle rider that has the CBR and she put those no cut frame sliders on there and it caused a ton, lot more damage man because it has like a like a bar steel bar or aluminum bar that goes through there to the other side and it just it bent up and it caused problems more damage to the bike um, to be honest with you guys i'm not really sold on frame sliders whether cut or no cut uh, because anytime your bike you know you have something sticking out from the frame and it hits the ground that's direct contact to the frame which in my opinion it can cause even more damage especially on these crappy roads in Cleveland like if you go down and speed it and the bike flies down the street it's gonna hit the imperfection in the road it can actually cause the bike to flip up um, in my opinion you're better off going with uh, case sliders these are RNG case sliders uh, which I'll include a link in the description and comment section of this video or if you, for all the mods on all of my bikes, by the way, if you go to my website, cyclecruiser.com and click on the menu tab, my mods, those are links to all the mods on all of my bikes. Good mods, the stuff I recommend. Uh, but I'll tell you guys, from my experience, I had a CB, my CBR 600RR, I pulled over on the side of the road once, thought I had the kickstand down, I uh, didn't have it fully engaged, slipped on some rocks, went down with the bike. <laughs> I didn't get any damage to the fairings thanks to leaving the passenger pegs down. That's why I tell you guys, don't take those passenger pegs off. It can take damage if your bike gets dropped. I didn't have any damage to the fairings, but I had damage to the case because I didn't have case savers on. I didn't have any frame sliders, by the way, but the only thing that got scratched up was a stator cover. Case sliders, it wouldn't be a problem. You know, when your bike goes down, your handlebars are gonna go here and it's gonna, your bar ends are gonna take the brunt of the damage. And if you have your passenger pegs down, it's gonna take the brunt of the damage uh, from my experience. So, by the way, this bike has never been dropped, thank God, you know. The CBR 600 double was fine when it dropped. Like I said, the only thing was damaged was a case, uh, stator case, and I replaced that, very easy replacement. But uh, I don't know, that's my opinion on it. Number six, uh, these under tail cameras that I put on the bike, which is, at the time it seemed really cool to have these extra camera angles on the bike. <laughs> but to be honest with you, I've had these on for several years and very rarely do I ever download the footage from those cameras. It's just, it adds more time to editing, which takes the longest with do, you know, doing these videos. And uh, I just don't, I just don't waste my time with it. And really, it's, it's a mod that I probably wish I'd have never did. But it was cool for the few videos that I showed you the footage on. Um, but anyways, number seven on the CBR 600 RR, the worst mod I did was one of the worst was putting plastic dipping uh, the fuel cover here, the cap on there. I'll tell you guys, that was so dumb because when I spill gas on it, you know, getting gas, it discolors it, end up scratching it off. Just junk. That was stupid. If you're going to, if you want it to look better, guys, just get one of these carbon fiber sticker kit deals like this with the pad, which protects it, by the way, and it makes it look cooler, and it's not that ch cheesy, plastic dip. Uh, and that, that brings me to number eight. On the CBR 250R that I had, I actually plasti dipped the rims, uh, which looked cool and it you know it was a cheap thing to do back then. I didn't want to pay money to have it powder coated, but I'll tell you guys, it's honestly it's ghetto, man. Uh, because you know you get some rocks that hit the the plasti dip, which by the way the plasti dip is pretty pretty durable, but you, you know if it gets scratched, you got to touch it up, and then it looks like crap. You're better off just powder coating the wheels, but if your wheels do look really cr crappy and you don't have money for a you know powder coating, you know that is a, a decent option is to plasti dip them um, because it, it does look cool and it, it is pretty durable. But in all honestly, guys, it's cheesy, it's ghetto. Get them powder coated uh, for the proper look. That's just my opinion on it. 
Uh, but anyways, number nine, the folding mirrors that I had put on, not these folding mirrors, but those dual sport big folding mirrors that I had on the WR250R, that was a mod I wish I never did. Uh, it was just, they were good mirrors, don't get me wrong, uh, but these are so much better having the handguard mirrors that flip up, very durable, uh, keeps it low profile so I can pull it, you know, put the bike in my bug out van and take it out easily without it catching on the roof. Also, it saves weight. These are really durable if the bike falls. I mean, these flip right up. Um, like I said, if you want to get a link to these mirrors, go to my website, like I said, cyclecruiser.com and click on my mods and know the link for those mirrors are there. Uh, I really love those mirrors. These hand guards are awesome with the integrated turn signals. But, yeah. but anyways, number 10 is the horn that I put on the WR250R. I put in a bigger horn thinking that it was going to be louder. That was a waste of money and waste of time. Uh, this horn really isn't that much louder than the stock horn, to be honest with you. The only saving grace of this horn that I bought is it has this, this cover here that I plasti dip, which it was a cheesy chrome look, uh, but I plasti dip it. And that's cool because it does protect the horn, especially with dual sporting and rough riding it off road and rocks being thrown up on it, keeps it from getting damaged. But that's only saving grace. Otherwise, honestly, I, I probably should have just kept the, uh, the stock horn. Just waste of money. So I hope this video helped you guys out, uh, helped you, you know, avoid these mods and save you some time and money. Uh, and for those of you guys that always ask me about my motorcycle gear, you know, my camo pants, my boots, helmets, cameras, everything, I always include links in the description and comment section of my videos. Or go to my website at cyclecruiser.com and click on the menu tab, My Gear, and those are a bunch of links to all of my stuff. And for those of you that want to see more of my videos, click on the menu tab, My Videos, and those are a bunch of playlists with over 1,200 plus videos categorized into those playlists to make it easier for you to navigate, to hopefully find something that will inform you or entertain you. Hey, hit thumbs up. It really motivates me to do more videos when you hit thumbs up and you participate with my videos. Uh, that's why what keeps me doing these videos, man, is I love talking with you motorcycle enthusiasts out there. I, help, I love to help motivate more people to get motorcycles and get over the fear of motorcycles. Uh, hey, so that's what my channel is all about. Hey, subscribe to my all-in-one motorcycle channel and also go check out my other channel, Bug Out Moto. It showcases a van that I customize for cheap that allows me to live in my van with my motorcycle anywhere and has a ton of cool mods. And that channel has everything from build videos, trip videos, uh, anything and everything Bug Out Moto. As a courtesy, I included two video playlists one for new riders and those are all of the videos I've done over the years that I feel are helpful for new riders and also my popular videos playlist. Hey, hit the subscribe button. I appreciate it. Take care.